this series of videos I'm attempting to repair and restore an HP 9862A plotter. In the videos in this series so far I've got as far as getting the plotter itself working and I was testing it using a standalone PIC demo board. So I was using this bit of simple code, uh, this plugged into the plotter just to draw a few basic shapes on the plotter. And that all seems to be working but of course the plotter would normally be run from an HP calculator. Unfortunately I didn't have the interface that's required to connect the plotter to the calculator so I've been going through the process of uh, reproducing one. So I've gone as far as creating the enclosure, the metal base plate, and I've been making up the additional parts I need, so uh, the uh, grommet that fits in here for the uh, cable, and um, I also need the connector for the far end of the cable. So I've made up uh, again a replica uh, connector housing and uh, this is to of course accept the uh, type of connector required for um, plugging into the back of the uh, plotter itself and uh, in addition of course I need to make up the other uh, bits and pieces to uh, recreate the, uh, the entire connector and cable assembly and uh, so once I've done that the next thing I have to do of course is get the PCB now I've been through uh, the PCB uh, design briefly in previous videos and I've got some ordered and they have finally arrived. So I've got the PCBs, I've checked these and uh, luckily they do fit nicely into the enclosure and uh, so the next step of course is to get one of these PCBs uh, assembled and um, go from there. So. Uh, it's a fairly simple board to assemble so I won't uh, bore you with the details, I've got all the parts so I'll just go through the process, get this uh, assembled and we'll go from there. So take a bit of a shortcut here. Okay so I uh, didn't take too long and um, next step of course is to see if this actually works. So I'll need to be able to connect this to the calculator uh, and to the plotter itself and um, again I've checked to make sure this fits into the enclosure and it does uh, but of course I now need to make up the cable that connects from uh, this end of the board through to this connector. Uh, again I won't bore, bore you with the details, uh, there are uh, some schematics online. Um, just a word of caution if you do use the schematics uh, online, one of them um, the connections to this connector are shown uh, upside down so where it says top it's actually the bottom and vice versa of course uh, so just be aware of that if you're using that um, set of schematics uh, other than that they seem fine but um, they've just got the top uh, identified incorrectly so I'll get this uh, wired up um, should be fairly straightforward this only I think 18 wires so it shouldn't uh, take too long I'll get that done we'll get back on camera and uh, go from there Okay, I've got this all wired up and it seems correct. And what I'm going to do now, I've got it plugged into a bare board here, of course. What I'm going to do now is uh, assemble this, get it plugged into the plotter, so that's this end, and then just check to make sure that we have uh, five volts on the correct line and I haven't got this uh, swapped over somehow. So I'll get the um, plotter end of this um, mostly assembled. I'm not going to uh, finish the final assembly, I just want to be able to plug it in and then uh, we'll see uh, what results we get. If we get the right um, voltages showing on the board, uh, then we can go ahead, fit the proper board, check the voltages again, and then if that's okay, we'll get it plugged into the calculator and uh, see what happens. Okay, I've got the connector um, fitted into the housing, and uh, the next thing I have to do is see if this will actually plug into the back of the plotter and uh, I haven't tried this yet so I'm not quite sure uh, exactly how well it's going to work. I have of course tried the uh, housings, now they've got this uh, curve at one end and it stops you putting this in backwards so it won't go in if you try and put it in the wrong way around um, but as you can see if I put it this way it goes all the way in. So um, if when I try and fit this it only goes part way in and then I can feel some resistance then I know uh, that's the point at which the connector is starting to meet the 
uh, board inside. And so that will tell me how far this is going to engage with the uh, fingers on the PCB. So let's get this flipped over. I'll start trying to put this in here, just fit it in gently. I can feel some resistance there. So that's how far um, I'm going to be able to engage with the fingers on the connector, which looks about right. It's about uh, eight millimeters, and that's how deep the connector is. So I should now be able to push this all the way in without too much resistance, which I can. So that's looking quite promising. And the next thing I want to do is see if we're getting uh, sensible voltages on uh, the uh, board itself. So if I power the um, plotter up, firstly I want it to come to life, it uh, shouldn't uh, die, uh, but also I need to see if we're getting uh, 5 volts on uh, the uh, plotter power rail. Uh, on this interface some of the powers derive from the calculator end and some from the plotter end. So we'll just get the multimeter Power up the plotter. This looks okay, no excessive current at the moment. And then we'll just probe around and look for our 5 volts on uh, some of these uh, ICs. So it's not on all of them, it's just on some. And as you can see, we're getting 5 volts uh, on that one. So that's looking quite uh, promising. It uh, means that um, at least the uh, connector overall is the right way round. So I'll power this back off. Okay, and what I'll do now is uh, swap this board out for the one um, that we've assembled. Okay, we'll do the same thing again. And we should still have 5 volts showing on the same device. So we had 5 volts on this one. And again, we have 5 volts. So that's looking quite uh, promising. Looks like uh, fundamentally we've got the connections the right, right way around. So the next thing I can do is uh, get this fitted into the housing. And um, we'll get it plugged into the calculator and see what happens. So this all fits together fairly easily. This just fits into the housing and then the grommet, if you can see this, just drops down into its recess. Okay, I'll get the uh, metal cover back on. We'll get um, a calculator onto the bench, plug it in, and um, step one would be to plug it in with the plotter turned off and then we'll power up the calculator and make sure it comes to life and that this isn't going to kill the calculator. Okay, so of course we're looking at the back of the 9830A calculator here and it um, goes into one of these slots. There are four slots and I believe the common slots, looking at the schematics, these are all the same. The actual uh, device is selected um, by the interface itself. So the way this machine works is all the um, peripheral devices, including the internal ones such as the display and keyboard, uh, are accessed through port numbers. So there's a port decoder, and uh, when you plug these external interfaces in, they're just um, referenced by a particular port number. So you read or write um, from or to a particular port number. So, for example, the standard uh, printer is port 15, and our interface for the plotter is port 14. Now, I did try plugging the a unit um, that was sent to me into this and uh, they do seem to be very tight so um, hopefully the one I've done will fit in uh, without too much force so we'll try fitting that in now and uh, I'll put it in the top slot I don't know how much of this you'll be able to see and uh, okay so far so good that goes in okay well it seems to have gone into the connector so Okay, that seems to be quite a good fit. So what I'll do now is I'll get the calculator turned round and then we'll have a look and see if um, it still fires up with this board plugged in. So this is the one, uh, the module with the um, assembled board. So if that powers up, 
we'll try powering up the plotter as well and uh, see if it comes to life. Okay, I've got the two spun around. I've got the mains power connectors plugged in, but of course they're not yet turned on. So we'll try switching on the calculator and uh, the plot is powered off at the moment. So I'm just looking to see if the calculator still comes to life. And we've got the normal startup symbol. So that's looking quite promising. Just make sure it's actually running. Which it is. So the next thing I want to do is power up the plotter and make sure that the uh, calculator still works. So I've turned the mains power on to the plotter. We'll power the plotter itself up. Make sure that the calculator still runs, which it does. So the next thing I need to do is uh, send some uh, data to the plotter. We'll most likely get an error at this point. So I'll just move the camera across a bit so that you can see the arrow light and um, see uh, if we can get the plotter to actually do anything. Okay, so this is the first time I've tried this combination so I've got no idea what it's going to do. And um, the first thing I have to do is just try and send a command to the plotter through the um, port 14 and see if that works. Now we do need to format the data in a particular form. So it's got to be uh, formatted for the right instructions. So I'll create a, a format uh, instruction. So it'll be 5B. So we'll say uh, line 10 format and then the format that we want to use. This will allow us to send a character through to the plotter that in theory at least should allow us to um, uh, effectively format the data in the way that the plotter requires it. I don't know exactly if this is the correct format for this plotter so I may have to experiment um, but at the very least we should see the plotter respond in one form or another. Uh, and then we just need to write um, something to the plotter. In this case I'm going to try and lower the pen. Okay so this line is essentially sending the value of 3072 uh, along with the format character out through uh, port 14. And then we'll just uh, terminate the uh, program. And I'll put an extra line in just so that we can see that it's actually done something. And so the program now is just uh, the format line uh, the right instruction, the display instruction and then the end of program. So we'll try and run this and see what happens. So we'll keep on on the plotter, see if the pen comes down or if we get an error. And uh, we have got an error which um, is not a complete disaster. It means that at least the interface is doing something. We're sending uh, data through to the plotter. It may just be that um, we need to initialize it in some way first. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do now is um, go to the um, emulator. There's a re very good emulator for uh, the 9830A and all the peripherals. Uh, I wanted that on camera. It could be quite tedious. I just now need to figure out uh, exactly how to test this. There is a test program on the test tape and I do have a listing for it, but it's quite a lengthy uh, program to type in. But what I'll probably do is go through that and see what initialization is required, if anything, for the plotter. And if I can't find anything there, I'll need to start investigating the interface and uh, see why it's not working. It could be I've got it wired up wrong or something like that. And it's just sending uh, the wrong data through to the plotter. So as I say, I'll do this off camera and uh, in the next video, hopefully I'll be able to make some progress and um, get the plotter uh, to respond to the calculator. Uh, there is a, a ROM cartridge available to drive the plotter that um, you need to plug into the 9830A but you can drive the plotter without it. Uh, it just provides some uh, higher level functions so you can draw um, primitives and uh, text and whatever on the plotter but you can still drive the plotter using a manual write program. So that's what I'm going to be doing here and see if I can uh, get this to work properly. Okay, I didn't want to end the video without showing you something a bit more positive uh, from this. So 
I've decided to include uh, this part of the testing in this video. I'll go into this in more detail in the next video. Um, made a bit of progress. The fault um, was actually in the calculator itself and um, it seems that the interface card at the back uh, had some, um, some damage. The uh, buffer chip that feeds the um, card select lines was uh, it was kind of working but it was a very low output and it was very slow or relatively slow so uh, although it was changing state it was doing it too slowly and um, I found that when I probed the board sometimes it would actually work and other times it wouldn't so I've replaced the buffer chip on the 9030 uh, um, it seems to be right now I'm doing some uh, further testing but I thought I'd just show this basic testing and I've got a program in the 9030 that's just meant to put a dot in the uh, same position on the paper each time and uh, I do that just to make sure that um, it's able to send the correct values if the values being sent uh, are wrong or if there's noise in the values some of the bits um, sticking or slow the dot will kind of move around um, but we should get the dot in the same place each time. I've run this a few times, you probably can't see it, but there's a, a dot uh, on the paper. I'll run it again and we'll see if we get uh, the same result. So I'm just going to run the program on the calculator. And as you can see, it's gone back to this position. We'll run it one more time. And so you can see it's going to the exact same position each time, uh, making a dot and the dots in exactly the same position so um, it looks like the interface is now working. Uh, I'm going to do some more testing now, I'm going to write some programs to draw some uh, graphics, uh, squares, triangles, that sort of thing and uh, see if it's working and then in the next video I'll show some of that and um, hopefully we're fairly close now to um, a fully working plotter uh, and interface.